Arduino boards have interested me for a few years, and while I have purchased them in the past, I never got around to actually using them to do anything more than make some LEDs blink. It's time to change that. But we have to start from the beginning. So in this video, I will be showing you how to get started with the Arduino Uno Revision 3. What is an Arduino? Arduino is three things. It's a family of circuit boards, a programming language, and an integrated development environment. Both the hardware and the software are open source, meaning it's free for others to use, modify, and contribute to. This is one of the great strengths of the Arduino community. There are many official Arduino boards available with various feature sets and price points to meet the needs of your project. In addition to the official boards shown here, other companies have created their own clones of these and some with additional specialized options. In general, regardless of the manufacturer, the board should be compatible with one another and able to use the same development tools. As I said, Arduino is not just the name of the board, but it's also the programming language and development environment. The language is simple and well documented. The development environment is available both as a standard computer application or as a web-based editor. You can connect and program the Arduino connected to your computer with either method. The Arduino is similar to Raspberry Pi in that they are both commonly used to power projects and do cool things. However, the Raspberry Pi is essentially a miniature fully-fledged computer, while the Arduino is a specialized instrument. A Raspberry Pi runs a full operating system. You can connect a mouse, keyboard, and monitor to it and use it like a normal computer. You don't do that with the Arduino board, however. Instead, you program it to do a usually singular task that you want it to perform, and that's all it does while it has power. That's not to say the Arduino is limited, far from it. The sky is the limit of what you can do with it. So which one should you use? Well, for now, as a fellow newbie, my advice is this. If an Arduino board is capable of doing what you need for your project, then buy one. Furthermore, buy the least expensive Arduino board that is capable of doing the job. Don't spend money on features you're not going to use. If you are like me and looking to experiment for now, then the Arduino Uno Rev 3 should be perfect. Now let's finally take a look at the Uno Rev 3. I bought a starter kit from Elegoo that included an Elegoo branded and produced board with a bunch of components like LEDs, wires, buttons, motors, etc. It seemed like a great collection to start experimenting with. Here's the general layout of the Arduino Uno. Some points of interest include the USB port for connecting to your computer, power connector for powering the board when it's not connected to the computer, the reset button should things go wrong, the built-in LED that we will be controlling later, power indicator, send-receive indicators that show us when data is going to or from the Arduino to our computer, finally the various pins used for connecting components to the Arduino. On the Arduino website under software choose downloads. Next select the download for the operating system you are using. Note, if installing on Windows be sure to select the Windows installer option so that the required drivers are installed as well. After the download completes, install the software and then launch it. Under the Tools menu, go down to Port and select your Arduino device. Also be sure the Board option right above it lists the correct board, else you may need to go to select it manually. We should now be able to write code to the Arduino. But first, let's discuss the parts of the interface. Verify. This checks our code for errors. Upload. This writes our program to the Arduino. Do. This opens a new sketch, which is the Arduino name for a program. Open Save for opening sketches and saving them. The serial monitor is a way for us to send commands or messages between our computer and the Arduino. This is where you write your code. As the comments tell us, the setup section runs once when the program is first loaded, and then the loop section is where our main program runs. Down here is where we see status information like our code is compiling, uploading, how big our program is, etc. The Arduino IDE ships with several example projects to get us started. Under File, choose Examples, then Basics, and click on Blink. This program will allow us to control the LED that's built into the Arduino and gives us our first taste of Arduino programming. The comments in the sketch tell us what's happening. In the setup loop, we're setting the pin mode for the built-in LED to output, and in the main loop, we are setting that pin to high, which turns it on, then waiting a second, then setting the pin output to low, which turns it off, and finally, waiting another second before starting the loop from the top. This is what our program does. Constantly runs this loop, turning the LED on and off. We can play with these values to keep the LED on, or change the blink pattern of the LED. Now let's try the web-based Arduino IDE. Back on the Arduino website, under Software, choose Online Tools, and select Device Manager. If you don't have an account, you will need to create one. Afterwards, just enter your username and password to continue. Now click on Add New Device. At the top of the page, click on Set up the Arduino plugin to begin the installation wizard. 
We need to install the web editor plugin, so choose Next. Now click the download button. Follow the instructions. After the download, double click on it to launch the installer and proceed to install the plugin. Once the installation is finished, the web page should tell you the plugin has been properly installed. Click Next. Now we get a quick overview of the interface. If you get a message like I have at the top, it means the plugin is no longer running, which was my fault. If you restart it, the message will go away. The web-based interface has the same example projects, so let's open the Blink sketch again. Now just like before, we can make edits to the code, verify them, and then upload them to the Arduino for execution. We're going to stop right there for now. I will have more Arduino videos coming in the future, but if you would like to continue on your own, I'd recommend picking up a starter kit like I did. There's a link in the description below to purchase it from Amazon. It was only $35 and included an Arduino compatible UNO board, lots of components, and over 20 project tutorials. I will be going through the lessons myself and will probably produce videos of them over time. Well, that's it for this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others. I plan to do more Arduino related videos in the future, so if that interests you, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you have already subscribed, thanks, and see you next time.